So hello everybody, um, my name is Lee Ashton and I'm a solution architect at Virgin Holidays in the UK. Uh, we've been using Magnolia now for about 18 months on our e-commerce program and I thought I'd spend some time today to talk about um, the approach we've taken and some of the um, technical decisions we've made and also the, um, the benefits we've seen and uh, perhaps some lessons we've learned and share those with you. So um, things we'll talk about today, um, just a little bit about where we've come from, where we're trying to get to, um, why we chose Magnolia, a little bit about the technical stack, and hopefully a, a demo, um, although uh, I'm, not, I'm a little bit worried about that at the moment, and then perhaps some tips if you're embarking on a Magnolia journey. There'll be some time for questions at the end, um, and I'll be around tonight and tomorrow if you want to catch up and perhaps get some more in-depth or more detail on some of these um, subjects. So a little bit about Virgin Holidays. We're a UK-based um, near London, and um, we travel to thousands of destinations worldwide, which of course means great staff travel perks. Um, and um, we're very successful um, in to North America and the Caribbean. We have a very strong partnership with Virgin Atlantic, who are our uh, sister company. And um, our biggest destinations are Orlando, Florida, and Disney. A wide range of products, um, all different sorts of holidays and trips. Uh, we also sell car hire and uh, park, parking, uh, insurance, excursion tickets, all the extras and add-ons. And we have a number of different sales channels. Uh, we have a, a chain of shops plus a main sales center. But of course we're here today to talk about our main, the main uh, channel we're talking about today is our e-commerce channel which is actually huge, huge to uh, Virgin Holidays. As well as obviously having sales online, we drive a lot of traffic through to our call centers and to our uh, shops from the web. So it's currently around 25% of sales, um, but we've got um, aims to grow that much higher. Um, hence the program we, we, we're starting, or we've, we've been working on. Um, we have around 200,000 user visits per day. Um, all of whom are very search hungry. So everybody does searching. Everybody loves to search to get the most up-to-date price and the most up-to-date availability. And that puts massive strains on our infrastructure because of the, all the back-end systems that that needs to go and uh, grab all the information from. We also have quite extreme peaks. So when we launch a new sales campaign, or uh, perhaps in January when you all get bored and fed up and, and miserable in January and you want to go on holiday, then suddenly the website gets hammered. So we have to cope with those extremes. So where have we come from? So a bit of a mess really. So a couple of years ago we had 11 websites, microsites, different brands, um, but 11 ways of maintaining those websites. So a real mess, 11 platforms, 11 different architectures, 11 different suppliers maybe, you know, just lots of different mess really. Um, so, well, we'll talk about the, some of the aims in a moment. Um, of course, with, with, with that many tools and that many processes, it's very inflexible, it takes ages to get anything done, lots of manual workarounds, um, very inefficient business processes. Um, it used to take us um, months to get a new destination on sale on the web. Um, and it's also very slow to launch new campaigns or new um, trading promotions. Everything was based around PC. So um, our customer base traditionally has always been very much uh, PC users, but of course, as I'm sure you're all aware, and, and, and finding yourselves, mobile devices are huge and, and growing very rapidly. Um, it used to be that um, People would research on a mobile device, on a tablet or a phone, but never actually commit, never actually enter the, uh, into their details and actually make the booking. They'd always jump to a PC to do that. But what we found this year is for the first time is that people are actually now confident enough to actually commit and, and convert on the, on the mobile device um, and actually enter their credit card details in. So we need to optimize for, the, for those mobile devices. Um, one short-term measure we did, we did last year was to introduce uh, an M site a mobile-only site, which transcodes our main site. Um, but it's just it's another platform, another uh, supplier, uh, another architecture, and more, more complexity and more to test. So where we're trying to get to is we're taking the approach of 
mobile first. Mobile is crucial to us, mo those mobile devices. And so we need everything to be based on uh, UX designs and then development and test, all from a mobile aspect first. And to do that, we um, are adapting responsive design as a principle. So that's one website, one architecture, one code base that flexes according to the device that the, the um, website is being rendered on. Of course, we're trying to increase the proportion of sales that we do online and trying to make more product bookable online. And as you can guess, we're trying to reduce all those, that complexity that I talked about a minute ago. So we're trying to reduce the number of sites, reduce the number of suppliers, of course, save, save costs in doing so, and trying to simplify everything, have smoother business processes, less to test and less to support. And a big one, a big win will be if we can get self-service capability for our business users. So they want to be able to make changes themselves without IT involvement release things very quickly, give them the tools to do their jobs, and um, launch products much more quickly. So how are we getting there? A little bit, I'll talk a little bit about the approach we've taken. So um, we're uh, heavily into Scrum and Agile methodology. So we have four Scrum teams working on different areas of the website. Um, they're all in-house development teams and QA teams. In fact, I've got a little video to show you, which um, I'm sure they'll all, they'll all be very pleased to know that it's going to be shown in widescreen on a huge video, uh, cinema screen. Make me feel like Steven Spielberg. Um, we um, have the goal of continuous delivery. So we want to do small incremental releases that flow through from development all the way into production every couple of weeks. And we don't, we're trying to avoid big bang releases uh, because they're high risk. Um, we've, we've not perfected this pipeline by any means, but we've, so far we've done a, a few releases very quickly um, and we've managed to do the release without any downtime, which is a big plus for us because it used to take us eight hours of downtime to do any software release. And we've um, heavily into the cloud, so we have a scrum team of infrastructure and deployment pipeline guys who are building the automation um, uh, of our architecture in AWS, Amazon Web Services. So we're running our live Magnolia servers in, in AWS um, with the resilience and the flexibility that gives us. Um, and it's also a lot cheaper than it would have been in our own data centers. And we've invested heavily in automation. So um, we've automated our infrastructure. So at the push, push of a button, we can create a brand new test environment that's identi identical to all the other test environments. We also use that scripting to deploy changes to the infrastructure automatically. We've also invested in uh, our de software deployment pipeline. So we have scripts, push button scripts that will take a piece of code through the various environments when, when they've been tested and, then, and signed off and they're ready to go forward and also automated testing. So all our testers now, our QA team, are building automated test scripts. So we have a full set of uh, automated regression test scripts. And the, the principle we're taking is around small steps at a time, test and learn. So um, develop a new feature, get it out there, test it, uh, test it with some real, time, real live users, see how they interact with it, and then roll it out to, to the general audience and iterate around, continually improving. So where are we now? What have we achieved so far? 
Uh, last October, our first website went live. This is virginatlantictravelplus.com, which is where Virgin Atlantic customers can come along and book a hotel to go along with their flight, or perhaps car hire. Um, it's doing very well and performing very well. But now the, the big one, virginholidays.co.uk. This is about 95% of our web traffic, so um, a much bigger step for us. And we've just, just three weeks ago, released the first page there, Hawaii, our Hawaii destination page. And we're currently A-B testing that page, trying to optimize it before we roll out the rest of our destination pages. And then we've got some, some very large milestone releases coming up soon. Um, the new home page, which is, uh, will have to be very carefully released and, and very carefully A-B tested to make sure that we don't um, ruin our, our stats on conversion and, and, and amount of people searching. And then I, th I thought I'd talk a little bit about the, the technical stack. Unfortunately, I'm not allowed to talk too much detail in this, in this particular stream around the technical side. Uh, I, I could talk all day, but um, just a quick, quick flavor of what, we're trying, what we've done technology-wise. So we're using Enterprise Edition Magnolia 5, um, running in AWS across multiple data centers um, with automatic failover um, and um, that's effectively acting as the web page server plus, of course, providing the, the web content. We've built our own uh, Java-based integration and business logic layer, a number of applications there that um, control and orchestrate the interaction with our back office systems, such as our CRM system or our booking engine. And we've used Elasticsearch as a repository of some of our product content. This gives us the ability to uh, do advanced searching and filtering from the front end. So our customers can search, um, for instance, um, show me all the hotels that are within 10 kilometers of a certain landmark. And Elasticsearch gives us that capability. And in order to deliver the responsive design flexibility across different devices, we use the Bootstrap framework. And after much deliberation and uh, much soul searching, we took the tough decision not to go with uh, Magnolia's STK templating framework, but we went with Timeleaf, which does integrate very well with Magnolia. Gives us more flexibility. I mean, we, the guys have built some very cool UX designs. And we are heavily into Angular uh, in, as a, a JavaScript framework to give us very rich functionality in the client browser. And that talks uh, via Ajax style calls back to Magnolia to get its content um, and also to the back end services to get third party content or information from our booking engine. So why did we choose Magnolia? Uh, the criteria that we chose um, were around, it had to be an open platform, one that we could customize. We didn't want to be tied into a vendor's uh, product roadmap. We didn't want to be, have a fixed set of templates that we had to use. We knew that we would want to um, deliver a competitive advantage by very funky, funky UX templates and, and components. And so we wanted to be, uh, have that full capability to build those ourselves and had to have excellent, excellent integration capabilities using standard patterns of integration. Um, going back to our back-end systems again, um, in any holiday industry, any holiday uh, e-commerce site, there are a, number, a huge amount of interactions going on, very, very talkative with your back-end servers. And of course, it had to be good value for money and um, good low a low total cost of ownership in terms of the actual software licensing, but also the, the infrastructure that it runs on. And a good technical fit. A good fit with our infrastructure, with our skills, with our development tools, with development processes, and the programming languages that we wanted to use. And um, although we love open source software, we like the security of having the supplier behind us in case we had a problem. So, uh, time for a little bit of demo. Um, now, I'm not sure this is going to work, actually. That the Stealth Bomber is because it was actually a top secret new thing I was going to show you today, which has only just been developed. But um, uh, I'm not sure it's going to work. Our, v our VPN doesn't seem to be working. So I'll give it a go. 
First though, I hope. Ah, okay, so this is the Virgin Atlantic Travel Plus.com that went live in October, Magnolia based, um, fully transactional website. Um, and uh, you can see your standard search that you would do for um, any holiday or hotel booking that you're doing. So obviously for search results and some details and lots of nice graphics around about our hotels. Um, so that's, that's, that's doing very well. Uh, then this Hawaii page went live a few weeks ago, um, the first of our destination section rollout. Um, lots of new templates, lots of um, Angular JavaScript in the page, talking to those backend services and talking to Magnolia. Um, and usual things you'll see on the travel website, but we've, it's very new styling for us, very new approach for our website. And I'm going to try our new one, but I'm not sure it's going to work. That's not a very nice error message to show you. No, okay, the developers must be rebuilding that environment, I'm afraid. Okay. So, it's not always a smooth ride. Um, I thought I'd talk a little bit about some of the, the issues that we face, some of the, the problems we've found. Um, we grew from about 10 developers uh, to about 40 in about three months. So that had lots of challenges, of course. And there's a very steep learning curve, lots of new technologies, Magnolia, Angular, um, AWS infrastructure, and automated testing. They all meant that it took us a long time to get going, a long time to start um, getting up to true the top velocity and being fr truly productive. We had to um, try a lot of things along the way. We had to throw away some code and, and start a game with some, and try different approaches. Um, and the, as you probably all aware, the, 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 the Scrum or the Agile process needs constant business engagement. And our product owners had the, their day jobs as well as actually trying to be part of the Scrum teams. So we really struggled to get those quick decisions made that we needed. We've also recently moved offices and we're split across two locations, which obviously doesn't help collaboration very much across the teams. Last year we got a brand new managing director and loads of new directors. So um, the sponsorship of the program was, was uh, a bit up in the air for a while, um, a bit unsure about the vision and the priorities. But the new managing directors are uh, very supportive, and so we've managed to stay on track and, and keep delivering, keep the focus. The issue we faced is about who is the boss? So who chooses the UX? Who chooses the, all the features and the priorities? Is it marketing, who might want a lovely, very minimalist design, um, very clean, but it's just about the brand? Or is it sales and trading, who want to have deals and offers and pounds everywhere and, and prices everywhere? So a constant conflict there. I don't think we've, we haven't fixed that issue yet. And I think that will be a constant, uh, a constant uh, uh, action point. And devices, back to devices. They're complicated and there's loads of different ones. So it is, uh, can be very complex for testing. The tools to automate that testing are quite immature. They're, they're improving, but uh, we certainly haven't nailed uh, that, that testing. And I want to talk, talk about perhaps some things that we've learned that you could use in your own projects and your own journeys. Uh, one thing is that um, although Magnolia uh, is very good and does lots of stuff out of the box, it doesn't do everything out of the box, so you have to customize it. So don't be scared to do so. Invest the time and, and in, the, in the platform in your development teams to actually extend it and, and customize it. Um, our sister company, Virgin Atlantic, spent a very large sum of money on a well-known web content management solution, um, not Magnolia, and um, they business are very hampered. They can't deliver the UX designs they want because the development teams have, haven't learned how to customize the tool, the product. So it's like a wasted potential. 
So you need to get in there, um, try things out, um, build some proof of concepts. You may have to throw some things away and start again, but uh, you're, you're learning all the time and improving all the time. And I'd say that you should stay in touch with Magnolia's roadmap. Make sure you're always aware of what's coming up. Make sure that you don't invest your time in building features now that will actually be out of the box in the core product in a few months' time. And it's not perfect for absolutely everything. In your e-commerce sites, there'll be lots of stuff that you want to do that Magnolia can't do very well or isn't perfect for. So, so you need, you'll need a, uh, a multitude of tools to bring together. And of course, the good thing about Magnolia is that it sits alongside those very well and integrates very well with other platforms. And don't be scared to raise support tickets. So um, sometimes you find that we're spending days trying to fix issues or work out the best approach for something. But don't be scared to uh, raise a, a support ticket and get some help from the support team who are very helpful. And that's it. <laughs>